Hi, I'm Rosanna Vargas Forbes, and welcome to episode 133 of Art This Week. In this episode, we visited the studio of Morachin Alayari. Her work can be seen this weekend at Oliver Francis Gallery. Now, for Art This Week. So, show us what you're working on. What, what's on your, your desktop? Um, so it's just this one section of um, you know my animation because I have like all the scenes kind of like separate um, and this is like only like one of the scenes maybe like the like one or two minutes of the animation um, and this is Maya um, which is you know the, the main um, software that I've been working on for the animation um, but also you know after uh, finishing the animation I you know, export it, you know, as frames, and then, you know, import those to Final Cut Pro, and I made, like, little changes, or add, like, one or two effects in Final Cut Pro, and, you know, that's it, just export it. But this is basically the main software for uh, my animation, the romantic self exams. So, yeah, all these, like, spaces are places that I've been, or are my favorite places, like, these are like the mountains, Albor's mountains around around Tehran. Yeah, I mean, there are so many other memories that I have, but these are like the most like vivid one or stuff that I think about, you know, the most. Um, you know, for example, like this scene with uh, the, you can't see the shadows here because I have to render it for you to see it, but in the video you can see it, but there's this like scene that, uh, you know, there's these trees, but then it looks like a, uh, you know, a kitchen or like a living room with a, you know, table with four chairs around it. Um, so, but then behind it is this like, you know, are these like trees that um, they kind of like, you know, glitch or like they have this like weird like light when you watch the video. So that's that's what I mean between you know these spaces of imagination and, and you know real spaces. And I have doubted myself a thousand times with every single building I've built. Every wall, every texture, every light, every scene in this animation. They all have put one more block between home and place. Every single object exists twice. Once by itself and once through its shadow. Each time separated broken into a different space, like my voice, like the time, like our identities. Their mnemonic existence collapse every time I remember, every time I forget. With every new day in exile, every new creation in this animation, an old memory from home is superseded, like our bodies and the constant threat of their replacement. So how do you plan on installing this at Oliver Francis Gallery? So this, um, an the animation is gonna be in the, in the back room. Um, it's gonna be just, you know, dark um, with a bench and the audience can sit and watch it because, you know, I want that space to be as, um, I guess, you know, like dark and comfortable as possible. So, you know, the audience can spend time, you know, with the piece. Um, this is, you know, for this animation, I've been working on it for six, seven months now. Um, and, uh, also, yeah, and it's going to be a 60 millimeter film, which is, you know, going to be in, in the main room and one of the walls. And then uh, it's going to be these 20 cubes um, that, that um, I'm going to do video mapping on them, but they're going to be like hung on a sheet of plexiglass. Um, the cubes are also from plexiglass. Um, and so, yeah, and which are the cubes are kind of like the, the physical um, space for for the animation because there's this one section that i'm showing you know kind of like tehran but not really like it's kind of like between again between 
reality, like how it really looks and how I imagine it, you know. Um, so that is going to be the physical space for that. Um, and yeah, it's going to be postcards on one wall, um, which are 60 postcards um, from comments and, um, you know, I don't know, statements of a lot of people um, that I know or people that I went on, you know, uh, pages on Facebook like I miss Tehran, you know, that's the name of the page. Um, that people made comments on, you know, their feeling about, you know, being kind of, you know, outside of Iran or this thing that I call self-exile for a lot of like youth, um, Iranian youth, um, and kind of like this idea of you know, missing it and talking about it a lot. You know, this is like a conversation that is, I guess, happening between us a lot that we're always talking about things we miss, um, which is exactly what the whole romanticizing idea of it is, you know, because, I mean, I do it too. It's, it's not like I don't do it, but it's kind of like my not exactly critique, but what I'm trying to address is that how we romanticize the, this idea of self-exile and how in the situation that, you know, we have right now, you know, as, as Iranians with a lot of, a lot of young uh, people leaving Iran and going to different countries to study or just, just to be away, you know, for a while, um, how we always romanticize that, that idea, you know, because if it was so great and beautiful and whatever, we would just go and live there, you know. But when you're outside of it, you always like think about all this stuff that um, you just, you know, think about them as like this beautiful, you know, um, places or things, you know, and you go back and figure out that it's, it's not accurate, you know, you just like really romanticize it. What made you want to use 3D animation to represent this idea of memory and what you remember personally from your experience? Well, I think, um, I don't know, I'm really, first of all, interested in using, you know, this animation because I can make these spaces that don't exist, you know. Um, with, with film, you have to always, like, you know, go film something that already exists and, you know, like, you can add a lot of, you know, other layers to it to make it, you know, um, more between imagination and memory or imagination and reality, you know. But I think there's this, this whole thing with, with Maya um, that gives you the opportunity of like making your own spaces you know um and because it's i mean it's a great software because you can go so far with it you know you can light the space you can and it, and it works everything works like a real space you know um so that's why i like using it but um i'm also kind of like balancing it out with you know like using this 16 millimeter film um that i'm using a text from my mom's diary um when it was war between Iran and Iraq and in that in that piece she talks about you know feeling guilty of giving like birth to me and my sister you know um, but you know she was writing when she was pregnant with with me and she has another diary for when she was pregnant with my sister um, but you know and then at the end she kind of like says that you know I promise I'll, I'll give you provide you a good life and I'll give birth to you in the United States which the the, the second promise never happens right um, but yeah kind of just you know, I mean, I, I always think about a concept and choose like what I'm really interested in exploring and then really go about, you know, okay, which software or what is going to be my media, you know, because um, my work is like so conceptual, I guess, you know, so that's that's the base. And then from there, I go about like choosing what, what should be uh, my media. So when did you come to the United States? 2007. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's really recent. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, that's the whole idea of self-exile, you know, because... I came to study and then I, I went back to Iran um, twice. Uh, last time was summer of 2010, but um, you know there was this whole thing with self-censorship because I was not comfortable in putting my work out because I do, I've been like working on a lot of political stuff. And then, um, especially recently, the Iranian government has been like really bad with artists, you know. They've been like arresting them um, and you know, there are all these like filmmakers who are in prison and um, now visual artists too. So uh, when I was going back, I was not putting my work out. I didn't have a website. I, you know, I didn't show my work to certain people um, because I just didn't want to get in trouble. But the last time I went, I just decided that I'm not going to go back for a while. I'm just going to come back and do what I need to do, you know. And that's why I think there's this like really interesting relationship between, you know, self-censorship and self-exile because it's, it's kind of like the, the less I censor myself, the more I'm exiling myself, right? Um, because then there's like this more chance of getting arrested or, um, you know, whatever, when, you, when I go back to Iran. 
Um, and that's not just me. There are a lot of other artists, a lot of friends I have that, you know, um, do works that are not okay, I guess, with the Iranian government. So they can't go back, you know. And then there's this whole other group of students and, and young people that um, leave Iran because they're in danger of getting arrested, you know. So they leave, like, right before that or, like, you know, after they come out of prison or, you know. Um, so I guess that's, that's, that's what the, where the idea of this self-exile comes from. We want to thank Morashin Alayari for speaking with us. Her work will be on view this weekend, April 13th through 15th, then open on the weekends until May 5th. More info on Morashin can be found at morashin.com. More information on the gallery can be found at oliverfrancisgallery.com. Thanks for watching. I still got your polar